The first topic we have to discuss is one that I honestly thought I would never talk about again. For the fact that it seemed so fake, how could there be any new updates with it? Well, that's a large part of why this video is titled what it is, because a huge discovery was made somewhat recently and that actually opens up even more questions than I had before about where the original information came from. If you've been watching my videos for many years, then you might remember an older Nicktoon that got its own dedicated video, that being Ah Real Monsters. This was a Klasky Chupo show from 1994 that followed three monster characters and their adventures, which sees the world through their eyes. The show was pretty popular at the time, running for four seasons until 1997. And when it comes to lost media from the show, there isn't really a lot of it, or so I thought. To this day, the original pilot to the series is still missing and only small bits of it have appeared online, like some screenshots and short clips that came from a promo which advertised the show. However, there is one bigger piece of lost media from the series that I came across years ago and strongly believed didn't exist. This was about a cancelled Avril Monsters full-length film that made the rounds in the lost media community and other places online back in the late 2010s. In that original video, I found forums, Wikipedia sections, and even a cancelled film book that allegedly proved this movie's existence. But after looking into each one of these more closely, it was all nonsense. And my biggest issue came from its primary claim by animator Frederick Zowski, who stated on Wikipedia that the film was cancelled because Viacom bought Paramount and that the film wasn't dark, nor were we planning on making it in the first place. I remember picking apart this quote back then and pointing out that he seemed to contradict himself by saying in one line it was cancelled and then saying it was never made in the first place. Not only that, but I couldn't even find any existence that this guy was real. So I concluded the movie must have been another fake rumor made by the fans as a way to continue the story of the series, similar to the three men pilot from Ed, Ed and Eddie. And now if you look, that cancelled film section on Wikipedia isn't even there anymore. So I concluded this was the end of the topic and we'd never be talking about it again. Well, this conclusion changed a year or so ago when I received a message from YoshiKiller2S, who was a well-known contributor of the Lost Media community. He informed me that through a connection he has in the script community, an individual had received several scripts for unproduced Nickelodeon movies from an avid Nick collector, and most importantly, a script for an Ah Real Monsters movie. I have no idea how far back the lineage on these goes, like what their original source is or who got them from who, but I did receive details of the monster script's creation. According to Yoshi Killer, Arlene Klasky, Gabor Chupo, Peter Gaffney, and Igor Kovalyov were attached to the script, though the movie itself never entered production. The first page of the script also allegedly says For Fred, which is believed to be a reference to Frederick Gazowski himself the guy from the Wikipedia article that was quoted in saying the movie was cancelled all those years ago. Now unfortunately, I never received any pages from the script, even though I was supposed to, and Yoshi Killer and Wumi who were also involved with the script never received screenshots either. But I can confirm the script owner was a real person, but after they found themselves in a controversy that I heard about, they deleted all their social media accounts and we never heard from them again. It's possible we'll never actually get that script unless another copy is found, but for now you might be asking yourself what this means for the topic. Given the long lineage of connections and the information coming to me from reliable sources in the community, I do believe an authentic script is in existence. We can even match up this new information to the old information in my original video, with how Fred's name is on the script and he said himself it was cancelled, with the buyout being a direct cause for its cancellation. Yoshi Killer stated it was also likely true they weren't planning on making the movie after the buyout, they being Klasky Chupo, which Fred also mentioned, and rather it was Nickelodeon that pushed them to make it, even though that never happened either. The only question I have in all of this is how the information that the movie was in existence originally got online years before, and who posted it. Like I said before, there were rumors of this movie as far back as the late 2000s, but I couldn't find any concrete sources still online that without a doubt prove it existed back then, especially with Frederick Zowski seeming to not exist, which fueled my original conclusion. And if it hadn't been for this script coming to light at all, we'd still have no other source to believe the movie was real. 
At some point, there must have been someone from back then who did share this information, and now the original source has just become lost or deleted over the years. But if anything, it goes to show that you never know what kinds of content could show up, changing the history of a topic. There are so many classic Spongebob mysteries that were popular in the earlier days of the lost media community, which have now been solved given their huge popularity over the years, and even looking back on in modern times. The first one that comes to mind is the deleted scene from I Was a Teenage Gary, which allegedly shows Squidward transforming on screen, though this never existed even in the storyboards. And then of course you have the likes of Astrology with Squidward, where viewers swore they saw zodiac signs represented in the series that had just not been posted online yet, which again were confirmed to never be made and not included in the series at all. And funny enough, in every one of these cases, it seems like the rumors were just too good to be true, and the lost media that everyone wanted to see just didn't exist. Which is exactly the case for another old Spongebob topic that I actually believe existed for a long time, and it was only recently that I discovered there was finally an answer given to its existence. Or should I say, lack there of existence. Once again, proving that rumors and speculation often get the better of us. This topic is about one of the strangest Spongebob episodes in the series, for the fact that it has no spoken audio, titled Reef Blower. In this episode, Spongebob uses a reef blower to remove a clam from his front yard, but ends up disturbing Squidward and causing all kinds of trouble. Like I mentioned before, this episode has no audio in it, and is only accompanied by the background music, sound effects, and the reef blower noises itself. So the question became if there was a reason why this episode didn't contain any spoken dialogue, and led to a whole lot of debate surrounding it. The long-standing theory as to why the episode was silent was the result of the recording equipment having malfunctioned on the day it was supposed to be recorded. So as a fix, the writers had to redo the entire episode in silence. For many, many years, this was the generally accepted theory as to the cause of the silence, and there is a fairly long thread in the Lost Media Wiki forums which discusses this topic from as far back as 2018. In this thread, there are also mentions of the information having been posted on the Spongebob Wiki, databases, and other articles as far back as 2016, but the oldest mention of the claim dates back to April 2009. The majority of this search was trying to find where the claim originated from, and if there was indeed some type of lost content from the episode. And this thread in itself is a great resource in discovering how the information spread as widely as it did. Even a claim from later on, this bit of trivia was included in commentary on the DVDs, though that was later debunked. This thread itself tries to prove whether or not the claim is true or false, and eventually contacts Vincent Waller. But if he ever responded, the thread was not updated to reflect that, so I'm not sure if he ever did. While most people in the thread do suggest it's probably a fake trivia fact, the piece did get removed and added back to the articles on different occasions. So there really was no proof one way or the other, until 2022. In June of that year, storyboard artist Jay Lender was asked about the rumor on Twitter, and directly responded to it, stating, False. My understanding at the time was this. Reef Blowers was made to extend Help Wanted to a full half show, but since they were separate productions, SAG rules mandated paying the actors a second set of session fees. That was around 2500 bucks total back then. So silence. What this means is even though Reef Blowers was going to be added to Help Wanted to create 30 minutes worth of runtime, the voice actors had to be paid for another recording session, basically two payments for the price of one episode. Nick didn't want to do that, so the episode became silent to avoid another payment. And that's it, the long-standing rumor that the episode originally had audio recorded, or that there was some kind of lost script involving the characters talking, isn't true. It was silent from the beginning, and it had nothing to do with audio equipment malfunctioning. This is a topic I almost covered back in the day, when it was more heavily discussed. So it would have been interesting to see the community responses back then, and maybe we would have come to this conclusion sooner, if that was the case. It's also still a mystery though, where the false information came from originally, or why it was posted in the first place. I wonder if that April 2009 claim is really the original source, and if the person who posted it knew they were creating a years long rumor. Another topic that had an unexpected ending was one involving lost music, and for its connection to Ren and Stimpy. For this reason it became one of the most wanted pieces of lost music around the time people were discovering the topic existed in the first place. This was also many years ago, 
when discussions surrounding a Lost song that Kurt Cobain had written for Ren and Stimpy resurfaced in the Lost media community. Now, the rumor of this alleged song having been made dates back to way before the Lost Media Wiki was even established, with the earliest recollections of this coming from Billy West, famous voice actor who played Stimpy in the show. Back in 2010 on the Nerdist podcast, Billy told a story that claimed Kurt Cobain, who was still not widely known at the time, came into the studio and said he wanted to write a song for Ren and Stimpy, to which the executives shrugged him off and threw his song in the garbage. One day the scraggly kid comes in and said he wanted to write a song for Ren and Stimpy and they, they said, yeah, that's great, and they threw it in the wastebasket. Oh. It was Kurt Cobain. At the time this was mentioned, other websites began reposting the story until it eventually hit lost media status. Back when I made my first video talking about it, there were already a lot of problems that didn't match up with Billy's recount, including the dates of when this would have happened and that nobody else at the studio back then recalled the event ever happening either, but still wanted to believe a lost song was out there. So for a few years that rumor lived on, and more people reached out to Billy West for comment, which is when everything started to fall apart. If you look up this topic in the Lost Media Wiki, there are two tweets that are linked in the article of people asking Billy about the Kurt Cobain song, to which Billy replies, No, I don't think there ever was any recorded music from Kurt Cobain. And, Kurt Cobain wanted to do some music for Ren and Stimpy, but it never came to fruition. I also could have swore he went on another podcast, or was at least recorded, saying he made the entire story up, but I can't find where that is now, so for the time being all we have are these tweets. But it's more than enough in at least debunking the fact that anything was ever recorded for the show. The person who claimed Kurt Cobain's content was thrown in the trash is now saying it never existed in the first place. So perhaps his original story was simply an exaggeration. But even after revisiting this topic now and hearing Billy's original story again, it's never even directly mentioned that it was a tape or a CD or any kind of media that was thrown out. Technically it could have been something as simple as a lyric sheet. It seems like the idea that a song was made just sort of fits with the story. Though I have seen some new theories that state Billy could have thought it was Kurt Cobain when it was actually some other unknown musician that looked similar to him, but no matter what the actual case was, Billy has now backpedaled on his original story. So I think it goes without saying that this song doesn't exist and never existed at all. The next topic is more of an honorable mention because the conclusion has not yet been reached. But it's part of a story that I never thought we'd be talking about again, because I didn't think this portion of it was even out there to find. And currently, this is still one of the biggest unsolved mysteries when it comes to early gaming content, and that's the Purple Yoshi Tech Demo. In another video I made many years ago, I discussed an image that I had found back in the early 2010s, showing a Purple Yoshi running through a 3D level, which was supposed to illustrate the graphical capabilities of the Game Boy Advance. At the time we had no idea where this came from, what it was supposed to be or why it existed. And through some research, I figured out the websites that shared it were not actually the origin of the image, and rather, they were reposts from an old IGN article. It was from the year 2000, around the time the GBA was a new console, and instead of talking about the image in its entirety, the story that it was connected to actually blurted out and offered a full version that you could see on their newly established forums. I theorized back then, and I think the current consensus still is, is that this image never actually depicted a real Game Boy Advance game, and that it was just something used to get people to join their forums. But we never actually figured out where it came from. In the original IGN article, it was claimed that the image came from the site's Japanese correspondent, giving the impression it was an internal Nintendo game that this correspondent got their hands on from Japan that nobody else had. It was allegedly a preview of sorts, and fed into the rumor that the game was somehow real. But even over the years, I had grown skeptical that this image actually came from anywhere except IGN themselves. They probably made it, created this backstory, and claimed it came from a correspondent on purpose. However, that might not actually be the case, and while I still don't believe it was any kind of real game, it could have actually come from Japan. Not too long ago, I took another look at this mystery and wanted to figure out the origin of the image, which led me to look at more former IGN employees and contributors from around the time it was posted. And to my surprise, one of the people I found had actually listed on their resume that their official role was IGN's foreign correspondent. I honestly didn't think that this person even existed, 
and that it was something IGN just made up to make the whole story seem more legit. Just considering the circumstance surrounding this mystery, he seemed like the missing link, and he is definitely someone at least who would know where the image came from, or could give us more information about its origin, even if it wasn't something he directly knew about. Well unfortunately this is where the mystery continues, because my efforts to talk to this foreign correspondent have not been successful. I found an email account for them many years ago that I ended up messaging and waiting quite a while for a response, but I never got anything. Then long after that, I decided to try messaging them directly on LinkedIn, as a way to be more professional about it, but he either never accepted my message or never saw it to begin with. Either way, I didn't get a response, and I'm still looking for an answer to where this image actually came from, whether it was something real from Japan, fake from Japan, or fake with an IGN themselves that was just never admitted to. It's funny to think that I'm intentionally being ignored as to keep this rumor alive, or it's also possible he just doesn't remember anything about it after all these years. But hopefully someday I can get a conclusion on this mystery. And who knows, it could lead to an even larger find or claim that nobody else expected. It wouldn't be the first time a lost Nintendo game surprised us, but until then I need to get in touch with this guy who I didn't even think existed in the first place. And now the final topic of this video is another one that nobody saw coming, that I haven't even talked about in much depth before, deepening the mystery surrounding an already mysterious and tiring search. This one is related to the Backyardigan series, which needs no introduction on this channel, or if you've been following Kids Show Lost Media. For many, many years, there have been searches conducted and still going for two of the series' biggest pieces of lost media, those being the original live-action Me and My Friends pilot, which predated the final series by many years, and the actual pilot to the final series, done in CGI a while later. These are the two big Backyardigans topics, though recently, there has been some debate over how many different iterations of the CGI pilot exist, as some screenshots look a little earlier than others, suggesting there are two different versions. But while doing research into these topics, the Me and My Friends team came across another piece of seemingly lost Backyardigans content that nobody, not even the person that posted it, is aware of where it came from. Back in 2023, Burr and Alex were looking through reels on Vimeo in the hopes of coming across new clips from Me and My Friends that had maybe been posted there by someone who worked on it, sort of like the Nick Studios Florida 10th anniversary video, which is where the only clip of it comes from. And while they didn't find anything related to me and my friends, there instead was a completely different piece of Backyardigans media that was there and became widely known about for the first time. By complete accident, this short clip of Pablo walking through an environment is sourced from a demo reel posted by Celluloid Studios, a company who worked in television and commercial animation, having created content for dozens of well-known companies. This clip is the only Backyardigans clip that appears in the demo and doesn't look like anything else we've ever seen from the series. Needless to say, the uploader of this reel was contacted and it was asked what exactly it's supposed to be, but turns out he didn't know for sure, stating, Celluloid Studios was an animation company that represented many different animation talents. Celluloid ceased operations in 2005. I imagine the clip you mentioned was from an animator who worked there at some time and submitted the clip to executive producers. I was one of several directors at the studio, but rarely had contact with other directors or animators that worked under them. I was never involved with anyone working on Backyardigans. Ever since this response, we had done a little work in trying to find other animators that were at the company in the early 2000s, when the Backyardigans was being worked on at Nick, but we never found anyone who could identify the clip. This has left us to guess on what this animation's intended use for, or what it could have been a part of, leading to two theories. The first theory, and the one that seems more plausible, is that it was a test animation done even earlier than the first tests for the Backyardigan CGI pilot that we know today. If you compare Pablo's appearance in this animation to some of his early concept art for the series, they seem to match exactly, bringing us to the conclusion that they are directly connected. It's also known now that Nick created the pilot in-house with motion capture, so it's possible they had tried giving it to other companies before doing that themselves. Now the second theory that seems less likely is that this is somehow related to Me and My Friends itself, and could have been used in the actual pilot. If you look closely at the background, it appears as if Pablo is located within a park, which is where the setting of Me and My Friends takes place, meaning its short length could have been used as a bumper or scene transition within the pilot itself. 
We've never seen any portion of me and my friends besides that one short clip from the Nick Studios Florida reel. So there could be more original content like this in the pilot that we're not aware of. And this is our first look. But to me, it does seem more likely that it acted as a connection between the concept art of the main series and the CGI pilot. Though more questions do need to be answered for sure, like if there are animations of the other characters similar to this. It's such a strange mystery that feels like it shouldn't exist, and gives us yet another piece of lost media to search for, like all of the topics discussed here in another shocking twist. Even though some of these topics took years to solve and weren't even still being discussed, their benefit is still being able to learn something new about them, and how that knowledge can change over the years, leading to an even greater search. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other Lost Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.